today is Friday, September 18th. This is the Education Committee in the Vermont House of Representatives. And today we're going to be taking a look at the budget that is going to, is on the Senate floor today. It is past second reading and we are looking at the uh, changes that they've made to the work that we did so that we can be better prepared to uh, advise the uh, House Appropriations Committee going forward. So if we could start, um, that would be great. Uh, I think that the, the key issues we're interested in are higher ed and pre-K-12. So I'm not sure where the first page is that affects us. Jim? Uh, yes, uh, for the record, Jim Dimmer, that's console. I would start with pages 38 and 39. I'm looking at one thing that was on um, page 37, of course, that <laughs> had a highlight in yellow, Jim. It, which, which are we? Oh, oh okay. We're looking at this part, not the, not the um, language. Well, language is coming too, right? It's, okay. like, numbers first. The numbers first. Um, okay, I'm just, I bought a different page 37, so never mind. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, is, is there a place we can find the document, Philip, that that you have up? Um, I I was sent a link this morning, so I've brought up this link. I didn't post the link. Um, it's on the Thursday set calendar. It's the addendum on Thursday. Set a calendar. Set a calendar, addendum one for Thursday. Great, thank you. Phil, I just emailed it to you. You should be able to then email it to your committee. Okay, thank you. So I'm probably not the best person to talk about these numbers, but I thought maybe you should see them. So maybe Mark or Rep Fagan or whoever is more familiar with, with, with these numbers, maybe. Yes, Jim, so there was no change in any of the numbers in the on page 37, 38 or um, and that's the end of the uh, uh, that's the end of the higher ed. There's no change in the base um, appropriations for any of these organizations, be it UVM, the colleges, et cetera, and certainly not for the Morgan Horse Farm. <clears throat> and the language is going to change. But the, the, there, there is language yeah. uh, issues, yes, but the, yeah. the numbers uh, remain the same. Okay, thank you. You might scroll to the next page though, just to show what the numbers are. To remind people, from my state colleges at the top here. Um, so those are the numbers. Um, and then I would go to pages 52 through 54. That's it. Yeah, these are one time. Yeah, can you go up a little bit further there, Phil? Uh, is this one time? Yeah, one time list. So go down to... Yeah, yeah. the very bottom, um, yeah. sub three is where it starts. Stop, Phil. Go back up to sub three. Perfect. Okay, right there. So this language, I'm not sure if it has changed, actually, um, because I wasn't that involved with it initially. But just to say what it says, it's a $10 million appropriation for so-called equitable distribution um, for the independent colleges. So it's determined in, consult in consultation with the um, AVIC in terms of the equitable, equitable distribution of these funds. Factors to be considered include, um, not limited to CARESAT funding guidelines uh, and creating a floor to protect smaller schools. Um, and then you have to be accredited and chartered in Vermont. I believe that was in your bill. Um, so basically, that's the, there. The, this changed, I believe. I, I guess I'm finding the green, the copy with the green on it, um, significantly easier to read. But um, I'm not seeing the green. I thought they added something about size and endowment, but I'm not now. I'm not seeing that. 
That was struck by uh, Senate Appropriations. Oh, struck by, okay. So um, I think I sent the copy that I had um, with the green markings in it. This is the bill, this is the, the um, document that sent that House uh, appropriations is also going to work with, and it's a little bit easier to follow than this because it actually identifies the changes. Changes. And I think Phil and um, Jim, I sent that to you. Oh, you you did, Madam Chair, but yeah. you were asking whether or not that was the appropriate document, and I oh. did I didn't bring it up until okay. I got that confirmation. Okay, sorry. Yes, um, I did get confirmation from from the chair of. Uh, house appropriations, but I really she sent it just to me. If you if you like me would like me to, I can stop this share and bring that up. I think that's an easier share, and I think it's just easier to see the changes. And um, if you could email that to the committee as well. Okay. Or while you're doing that, I can email the copy to the committee. You you sent us one in an email that has the green Senate changes in green. And I sent that. This is the new, the new one that was sent. Sent it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I did send it to you. Thank yes, you. Yes. Yes, you did. That's yeah. how I have it up. And it is easier to read in green. Yeah. Lynn, what's what's the date on that that it was sent? Um. Oh, Lordy, be yesterday. I think it said yesterday. Um. I have too many things opened here. I'm doing that. <laughs> Madam Chair, is this what you're looking for? It must be yeah, it, so so yeah. that is 744 in the morning before um it, it from three days ago um it's there are things in there that are no longer in the bill oh goody so what did i wait a minute is that the, okay so then we i guess we do need to go to um it's gonna be a little bit hard to follow the changes then. Okay. Um, well, Kate, if we go through through the, the older one, uh, Representative Fagan can point out to us what's been stripped out, which might be good to know actually. Yeah. That'd be fine. I've got the I've got the addendum open, so I can I'll work from the addendum. Now I'm a little confused. Which one would you like up? Welcome to our world. <laughs> Which is going to, I think that perhaps it's easier to follow the one with the green markings. And the, um, is that current? No. I didn't think so. Green. But I can, I can tell you what's, uh, the, what was changed from the time of that document to the Senate addendum that, that passed 30 to nothing. Um, yeah. on, on a reading, so. Okay, thank you. So does everyone have the uh, green, the marked up one in I've green? Everybody it's has it? Thurs Thursday, 10.31 a.m. Right. Oh, I've got 7.44. Right, I have the 744 one. That's what I have. Yeah, no, I understand it was sent by Kate at, at 1031 in the morning. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the green just so you can find it find it in your email easier. Yep. But the green, it's the green timestamp at the top is 744. Yep. Okay. Did you find it? <laughs> There's three possibilities for me to post, I think. The one that Jim Desmarais sent, the one that Kate sent, and the one that Representative Fagan sent. Let's go with Representative Fagan. Okay. That's the addendum. Unmarked, you know, there's not highlighted. Oh, okay. okay, that's the same no. as Jim Desmarais De then. then. Then go with the one that I sent you and, and um, and I do apologize to everybody. This just passed yesterday, and um, we don't have a we don't have an easy copy to work with yet. So um, I sent you a copy that was marked in green, and Peter Fagan can go through the uh, 
the changes to the higher ed portion of this. And what page would you like me to move to? 36. No, excuse me, we're gonna do higher ed first. Uh. So, okay, we're looking for section B1101.2. Oops, not and there. Passed it. No, you passed it, so it's gonna be before that. I have no idea where it is on this. 1109, keep going. Uh, page 11 is where the AVIC stuff is, and page 36 is the K-12 stuff. Okay, so go to page 11 then, please. I'm gonna decrease the uh, magnification here. It's hard for me to see the... Yeah, I understand. Page 11. Okay. Page 11. So start down slowly, then, please. Agency of administration. Number okay, there's, three. there's the first one, number three. So the only thing that was dropped from this language and it was dropped by Senate appropriations of the two words endowment size right there in the middle of that paragraph. And Representative Webb um, kindly sent a copy of this language to Susan, cannot remember her last name, from I AVIC. Yes. Yeah. Who, um, like the language uh, without the words endowment size as it as it appears in the final draft that the Senate will vote on for the third time today. So I think it's in, uh, you know, it, it's in pretty good shape. It really, I think some of these words are, are not necessary, like uh, um, you know, distribution factors, CARES Act funding guidelines. We put that in an earlier bill. So everything, all the uh, all CARES Act funding um, that are in all the bills, uh, the the federal funding guidelines uh, apply and create a floor to protect smaller schools. I, I you know, um, at any rate, but it doesn't we'll, matter. We'll let you, we'll um, you wordsmith that uh, between those two committees, but we will just get. I'll let the committee hear from Susan. Yeah. Next yeah. week. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> So it's just again the only the only thing, and I'm I'm not um, I am personally not inclined to to try to wordsmith anything else. Uh, if SAC removed endowment size, then I think that uh, personally I think that we're good. But I would like to hear what uh, you know confirming what she has to say. Okay. And um, then your thoughts. Yeah. And I I have heard a little bit of a challenge on the on the next one for UVM. Yes. So if you could, we could scroll up a little bit. And stop, you need to, Phil, can you go, can you make it a little smaller? We can see the whole thing, like mm -hmm. 125. Right. Try 125, please. Perfect. So the kerfluffle here is a full uh, specific quarterly accounting of all funds appropriated and expended during the span of time that the emergency order is in effect. Um, the, the massive amount of, of work uh, and uh, uh, of work that that would require to put that together. I, you know, a, a company's financials is what they're asking for. And so um, there's, that's the, the kerfluffle. Um, there, the uh, the revenue loss projections upon which uh, I have no idea the documents uh, and the the emails back and forth and the et cetera that went into uh, would go into trying to uh, uh, put that on paper. Um, we'll, we'll get Wendy in on that. Yeah. I, I know that there's some things that there's there was an assumption that some of this information wasn't already 
available anyway. And I believe that this is a question of why are we just asking it of UVM and nobody else? And so that's that, the, thank you. That's the other question. Yeah. <laughs> So, so we'll we'll invite Wendy in to uh, review that with us. Thank you. And did that come from appropriations, or did that come from 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 Senate Ed? I wasn't sure about that. I am not sure. Not sure. I am not sure. I think that she'll know, but I am not sure. Okay, thank you. I mean, I I have my I I think I know, but I'm not going to put think I knows out, out there. Okay, that's always wise. Okay. So I think that is it for you then, correct? Uh, no, there's a little, you might might be. Um, oh, we, yeah. There's, uh, oh, and then there was a reduction in the amount of money for, and I don't remember what page this is on. I think it's a little further to the bottom. Hang on, to, uh, let's see here. Um, well, well, we're still back on number four. Uh, yes. The, the actual $10 million is in there. That was in there, right? Correct. The $10 million sure. is unchanged. Yeah, right. it is in there. So, uh, Phil, if you would go to the bottom of this section, just above section B1102, maybe two pages down. If you see 1102, then stop. Okay. Oh, okay. This was a lot was struck here. So, all right. Was that related to us? <laughs> um, yeah. Stop. Okay. Stop. Go back up a little bit. A little more. Thanks, right there. So to the Vermont State Colleges in coordination with Department of Labor Workforce Training, that was $3 million. It's now two points. That's right. That's um, right. Everything else here remained the same. And at the bottom, you'll find wording highlighted that says if it's unspent by sometime in November, um, keep going, there it is right there, November 15th, it's going to revert to ACCD to, to uh, help out businesses that are that are suffering. I just heard from uh, a wedding venue today that lost 95% of its uh, of its revenues during this period, for, for example. So um, the, the issue here, of course, is that we've got two months to deploy those funds, October and November, and that's it. I just, you have to wonder, can um, workforce training uh, programs be, uh, be um, applied for and used in that time period. So I'm sure that that's what the, the Senate was looking at when they uh, when they did this. They took 700,000 from the, the 3 million, so it's still 2.3. It's still there, it's still available, but they're also making sure that, that it's gonna be swept a little bit earlier because the only option that we have if we wait until December 20th is to, in all probability, move the funds into the, the UI fund. And thus we will not need to send them back to the federal government, but we're not going to apply them to businesses. The Senate here wants them applied to businesses if it doesn't work for workforce training. So you might want to ask someone from, from DOL um, to come in to speak to that. All right. Thank you. And that's it for higher ed. Okay. I don't believe we have Chip in the room. So, so committee, um, my intention is just to have uh, Susan Steitley and UVM in to just respond to that. Could I? Could we um, take the document down for a minute? We're going to want to bring it back up again. So, just checking with committee. Does that that sound good? That will that work for everybody? Yep. Okay. So, Phil, let's let's get them in. Um, I, I don't know if we've got a slot yet, but if we could get, we could find a slot um, for scheduling and get them in would be great. And who is the name again, Madam Chair? Um, Wendy Koenig from UVM, Susan Steitley uh, from the Association of Vermont Independent Colleges. I don't believe there was anything here that changed substantially for the Vermont State Colleges. Is that correct? Nothing changed. You're correct. There's <laughs> there's really nothing that, that is substantively changed. The only thing is the one I just pointed out, and it's that's not you know. Yeah. I, I don't see that as a as as a big issue personally. So I will uh, refrain from using their time. Yeah, that's fine. Review. They, 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 they have a lot of things they're trying to work on. And they're probably. busy. Everybody's they're busy. just a little, yeah. yeah. They're just a little busy. Um, so thank you very much. That was really, really helpful. We're, we're kind of um, 
trying to look at this document uh, standing in midstream, which as we know is not always a good idea. But I think- well, Madam Chair, it's also a document that you don't normally look at from its totality. It's a huge document this okay. year. And you know, and we, it, House Appropriations really, uh, really are thankful to all the committees that have done a lot of this work with us to be able to move this along in a very quick manner, but a very thoughtful manner. So thank you. Thank you. Kate, Kate before we lose Representative yeah. Fagan, yes. yeah. I just have a more global question. Uh, I, I know that it, since we don't have chip here, um, so the Senate um, basically added $22 million to the K-12 funding. Yes. Where, where, where's the shift? Where did the money come from? I'm not trying to remember. I've only, I've read the document front to back once. <laughs> I just, I assume it's supposed <laughs> so to come I, from, I, I, from some not, of the workforce you know stuff that was going um, on. You know, some of it was that is, was there was a $25 million reduction to the healthcare stabilization grant fund from 275 million down to 250 million. So that was part of it. Uh, yep. But there was also $17 million added to, um, to uh, um, unemployment paycheck. So you'll probably remember the Joint Fiscal Committee accepted two weeks ago, probably one and a half, maybe three, I don't know, uh, funds from the federal government to, to extend unemployment for five weeks, $300 per. Um, we did not have to do anything, but the, uh, the Senate added $17 million to that so that we could add $100 to that paycheck from Vermont, such that the, the unemployment paycheck will be $400 a week instead of $300 a week. So really you're looking at, at almost $40 million now, and I can tell you where 25 million came from. So it's, it's still to be determined as far as, as where the rest of it is. Now, one of the things we built this budget on $20 million of FEMA funds coming in um, to supplant the use of CRF money that we could then spend elsewhere, that was an extraordinarily conservative amount. We anticipate we will get more, but I can't tell you how much more. So it's this is going to be a moving part right until moving moving target right until the 30th of December. Thank you. I have a quick question too. I'm sorry. No, so no. just a, as we go through this, um, so the yellow highlights are just sections that are still being discussed, or um, there's a lot of yellow highlighted stuff. Yes, there is a lot of yellow highlighted stuff, and I um, I don't know if that was uh, if that was someone in our joint fiscal office going through and highlighting changes. Typically, that's what it means. Okay. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you for sure that's what it was. Okay. Like I said, I'm I'm working off of the Senate addendum. Um, okay. We each we each like like for instance the green highlighted thing. I'm color deficient. There are certain I can't see a robin unless it's moving. So uh, so there there are certain colors I can't see, and green is not helpful at all. It appears blackish to me. So I will tend to work off the uh, the the Senate addendum because it doesn't have any colors on it, and I can you know well. I go to the areas that I know and then everything else I just read. So okay. I'm not going to tell you what it means. There's a really good note to, to ledge council blue. <laughs> I, well, I've, I've, you know, I've told them that in port and Maria says, I think every time I see this coming out in green, I think of you, I'm so sorry. And, and if you've seen me, I'm holding it up like this, trying to figure it out. So, All right. I won't read too much into it then. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Madam Chair. Appreciate it. Thank you. And, and by the way, Peter, one more question. Are you hearing any about any amendments that are going to the Senate floor today? Um, I have not heard of any. Um, it, again, 30 to nothing. It kind of sounds like it's it's pretty yeah. you know, locked as far as what they're going to do. But I haven't heard of any. So what one would usually assume? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and the amendments may be very, very, you know, just just little technical things. There's always a technical amendment on the budget. Yeah. It's just it's so massive and it's doubly massive this year. So yeah. okay. and, and need be, you know, the, the, the parts you've got coming up for for K-12, I'll see if I can get Chip to get in here uh, very quickly. Um, th there appears to be some real changes in there. So so, uh, you know, that's going to need to be looked at. Yes. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Peter. Come down and join us anytime. Uh, well, please invite me and I will come back down when you have Wendy and et cetera. Um, Thank you. Unless it's Monday morning at nine where I'm already double booked. No, we won't do it Monday. When, I think it'll probably be Tuesday, hoping it'll okay. be Tuesday. And, um, and Phil will just make sure that you're invited. How about, right. today, how about today at three? 
no, that is not going to work. <laughs> I, I'm not going to be able to drag these clubs around very many more times this year. And so, you know, I, I intend to enjoy myself a little bit, especially the 19th green. <laughs> well, you too. Well. Thank you so much, Peter. Okay. This is not going to be as easy as I had hoped, I'm afraid. Um, I was thinking that this was the copy that had um, the, the Senate appropriations was sending to the floor. So we don't actually have the highlighted copy that is being sent to the floor. We've got, and we don't have Chip, I believe. And Jim, <laughs> where, where are you in your understanding of, of where we are in the case? Well, I think what we should do is move <laughs> away from the green version because that changed a lot when you come to okay. uh, K-12 and we'll move back to the addendum that we have that doesn't have the different colors. Okay. Uh, what page, what page, Jim? Uh, well, I'm not sure the page exactly because I'm looking at the green version now, which has different pagination, but the section we're looking for in the uh, addendum is B, B1111. Okay, thank you. This is approximately on page 63, I think, of the addendum version, but I'm not sure. So, sorry, where do we find the addendum version? That's the Senate calendar? No, Senate calendar for Thursday, yep. Uh, it begins on page 62. Senate calendar, Thursday, page 62. Uh, it's go. also what, it's, you can use the link that Phil uh, emailed all of us this morning. Oh, okay. Here, it's right here, yep, here we go. So, um, should I walk you through this so that I can, would that be helpful? Yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to suggest, I, I, I know that for me, I find it a lot easier to also be following my own, <laughs> where I can actually uh, make it larger. So just make sure we give people a minute to be able to open it up on their own if they'd like. And then if you want, you of course can start marking it up um, on there. Okay. Let's... Go for it. Okay. Um, so subsection A, uh, the appropriation is the same. So that's $53 million. Uh, when I say the same, same as I review, re reviewed with you a couple of days ago. Um, yeah. That's the same as we reviewed. Um, subdivision one has changed. Um, so we have the intent language here, which we reviewed, uh, the intent being to ensure safe opening of public schools and have them use the maximum amount of money permitted. Uh, but there was language in here before uh, around, you had language here before about um, giving the agency some, some discretion to reallocate based upon relative priority. Uh, that had been taken out of the draft we went through a couple of days ago and they have some other allocation language in there. But they've taken out the allocation language entirely uh, because the bill has in other sections allocation language for all the, all the provisions. Is this perhaps what um, Representative Fagan was referring to? Is that? I'm not sure. Okay. But the, he was referring to it back in the higher ed stuff, but yeah, there was kind of a global statement about reallocation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so I, I'm assuming it's a, to, to just to, to clarify in my own small brain then, Peter, you're seeing that this is was changed to make the adjustment that Peter Fagan was talking about throughout the bill? Yeah, I, I, that's my understanding. Okay. Um, I have a question just because I see it here. The um, CRF eligibility for the three independent technical districts, that's in a, that was in the miscellaneous bill that is different from this, right? Um, it should be in here, sorry. Here, be here, yes, yeah, here. Oh, here. Chip, yay, hi. <laughs> so, so let's go there. So um, you see that the efficiency for my uh, allocation um, it's the same, uh, 13.5 million, that's the subsection B. And then C, they've increased the allocation. You had 87, they had, had 88, now they have 88, three, 
and the additional three comes from independent schools, which we'll come to momentarily. So they've transferred some money from independents to publics here. And then um, it says, as used in this section, school district means a school district um, as defined or a regional career technical center school district. Those are the three independent ones, okay? So that language is there. Um, and then um, they had a whole separate section. Um, there were three money sections before, another two, because the section that dealt with the money going to equipment, food, equipment, and supplies, um, that's been taken out and the text has been moved up here. So it says now of these funds, um, which is the 88.3 million, of these funds, up to 4 million um, may be used for eligible supplies and equipment for food, for vehicles, for users, et cetera. I'm sorry, um, you just, could you just tell me what page we're on? We're on page 62. Two. Two. We're, still, we're still in the subdivision one here, public school. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. Yeah. The public schools, a couple of changes here to summarize, increases the, the allocation by 300,000, taken away from independent schools, keeps, keeps the uh, coverage for the three independent tech centers, and then moves into this area of the bill, the $4 million allocation for food services, um, equipment, et cetera, okay? So Jim, the, the regional career technical center school districts are the three independents. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And then you see un under approved independent schools, the allocation is decreased from, from 1.5 million to 1.2. So that's where the 3 million came, 300,000 came from to shift up to public schools. Jim, can I just ask one question? Yep. Um, this is Sarita. Um, in section, the section above where we're talking about um, in section one in terms of funds for meals, the two school districts or at least one of them that didn't pass budgets talked about if their budget didn't pass, they would have to um, cut funding for providing meals for the children. Is there any way I, this may be, I, am, I have no clue, but is there any way these funds could be used to at least pay for the, that portion so they wouldn't have to cut that? It's not designed for that now. It's designed, as you can see from the language here, it's for the purchase of CARES Act eligible supplies mm -hmm. and equipment, um, including vehicles, freezers, and other capital assets necessary to provide meals. So. It's not the meals themselves, it's the equipment that supports meals. However, the gross dollars could be used for that. Sorry, the gross dollars, I'm sorry, that's a very, very answer, uh, Rep. Webb, that I have. So the, um, the 88.3 million uh, is for any COVID related costs, right? right? So that portion of that money could be used for food if it's carriage eligible, right? So that's a better answer than I had. Okay, so they the schools could apply at least for the food portion if they had were considering cutting that from their budget. I believe so. Okay. I believe that would be carries eligible. Okay, and how would they would they know about that? Would they know they would be able to apply for that? I believe they would because the agency of, of education has issued guidance to school districts as what's eligible. Uh, I haven't looked at the guidance for this specific point, but I'd be very surprised if it wasn't part of that because already this was covered for the summer meals program. Okay. So we know it's eligible. Thank you. Okay, going down to approved independent schools, we talked about that, uh, the reduction in the al allocation there. And then in D, uh, the, uh, we talked about this last time we went through the version a couple of days ago, they struck out the, um, million dollars for accounting and technical. Um, and then um, they have new language here, uh, which says, if the appropriated CARES Act funding proves to be insufficient to cover all reimbursement requests, any costs for new pandemic expenses shall be fully covered to the extent, to the extent I, should, I should say to the extent of appropriated funds, that's a typo. And it says, if probation is necessary, it should be on request from school districts of repurposed expenses that freed up previously budgeted funds if this year 21. 
So this is a question of prior priority. And what this is saying is that uh, the allocation for K-12 will be on new unbudgeted costs uh, as opposed to costs that have been budgeted but repurposed. Um, so that's what that's saying. And then uh, next section is B113. And that's the same as you had before, just a cross-reference to the new appropriation for HVAC. And you'll see that B114 has been deleted. And that is because they moved that $4 million uh, allocation for food service uh, equipment up into the section we just reviewed. So they took out section B114 altogether and just covered it in a different way. Uh, uh, could I go back quickly just for a clarification under D, where they took the, where they deleted the accounting and technical assistance? Yep. Um, was this to just ensure that um, they weren't using it just to, to, to so, so this, this has to be something that was unbudgeted and um, not sort of, not something that had been budgeted, but they no longer needed it. And now they're able to use that person, for example, for a different cause. Is that, is that addressing this? Or is this, yeah. uh, am I misunderstanding this? No, oh, so, so what happened here, you're, you're correct. So what happened here is that, um, that the $1 million, um, the agency hasn't used that yet. Uh, I'm not sure they had plans to, but um, Senate Education decided to move that $1 million to uh, pre-K through 12. So you had an allocation initially of $87 million. They had an allocation of $88 million. And then they just add 300,000 more from independent schools. Right. We hadn't, that was not a, one of our things was the 1 million was not to put it into this, but I, I just was trying to get clarification on um, the unbudgeted costs piece here. But I think I, I just need to look at it a little bit and I'm not going to slow us down while I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> so okay. we, we can keep going. Okay. Then, so we went through B114, um, and then the rest of, of the policy provisions, I don't believe have changed. Um, so length of school year, I believe is the same. Uh, the online teaching endorsement waiver um, looks to be the same. Elections uh, looks to be the same. The ADM adjustment, obviously that came from the Senate side, not from you. Uh, and that's basically holding Districts harmless from a, a decline from the previous year. And this uh, language, we had three options we were looking at. This is the one that was recommended by the agency. Correct. Yep. Okay. And we talked about reimbursement of transportation expenses a couple of days ago. I believe that's unchanged. Um, and pre K teachers waiver again for pre qualified, pre -qualified programs so that they lose a teacher. That looks unchanged. Task Force for Universal After School, the only difference here from what I talked to you about last time was there are two sections before, one were, were the findings, and the second was the creation of this task force. They've taken out the findings altogether and just left the substantive provisions around the creation. Okay. Uh, and if you scroll to the end, I think that will do it for this section. And the otherwise, everything in this is the same, they just changed the dates from the bill that we have on our wall. Well, we change the dates uh, to, it's gonna be April 15, 2021. Yeah. Uh, it's a, the reporting, reporting date. And um, that, do you know if um, they took testimony to, to just uh, check on those dates to see if those dates? I don't recall hearing testimony on that. Okay. Okay. And that is it. That's it. Okay. Chip, um, Serena, did you have a question? No, I just, I'm just wondering why we don't have a student on the after school program task force. I mean, it's after school programs for kids. I would think it would make sense that maybe we could recommend a student be on that committee. I think they would have a lot of good information and input as to what they would consider an after school program should consist of. So I'm just advocating for that again. I just think it would make it a really better committee and you know get some you know real voices in there. That's all. 
No, I, I hear you. I think it's a point well taken. Um, I, I need to talk with leadership on, on this. The question is, would all this be better in a bill or in the budget? Um, and any questions, thoughts at this point? Um, sure. This is the yeah. moment when we get to say our happy things. I'm really happy to see the ADM solution in there, and I hope it remains. Do we have a, a just a committee um, at this point? Um, I'll be asking you on Tuesday. Um, I'll be asking you on Tuesday uh, your opinion on these straw polls on these these items, and I will get testimony um, from the relevant characters. Um, I've already got UVM and Susan Stightly. Um, we'll get our usual suspects. Um, is there anybody? Um, I, I will. I'll see if we can get someone from AHS. Um, we, I, I thought we were going to have a joint meeting with um, House Human Services, but I think when Human Services saw that language in there, they didn't schedule the meeting. So we didn't follow up on that. So I'll check on that. And anything else anybody would want? And then this should bring our, our work to a close. So Kate, you think Tuesday might be our final? Our final, yeah. Our final work. Chip Conquest, anything that, that you would want from us? Um, just your final work. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, is Tuesday an okay date? Uh, does that meet your needs? Chip? I asked my um, I asked my chair that um, when I w should ask you all to have stuff for me, and she sent back Tuesday with question marks, which I don't know how to interpret, but I'm assuming <laughs> at this point that she would like to like us to have our committee's report back to us to the, yeah. our committee by Tuesday. I, I will see if I can get that um, in the morning. Um, if we can do that, that'd be great. I, otherwise, I'd be happy to bring the committee in on Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, but I have a feeling that um, I might be the only one there. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm seeing nods that yes, don't, don't you consider it. <laughs> so we will uh, we will um, get together on, on Tuesday and I think that we'll be able to give you some answers to this. Great. Um, so I, I came in um, when Jim was partway through the pre-K to 12 section. Yeah. I just wanna, was there anything I missed? Was there anything in there that you all um, were opposed to, or I mean, I don't think there were there were only additions, I believe, above that in terms of dollars. In, in so, pre K twelve, I don't think there was anything glaring. There are some policy pieces that that um, just wondering if they're in the right place. Okay. At the moment, um, and I, I I need to have a conversation with the speaker about that. So, if there isn't anything else, um, you have a 40 minute break <laughs> until right. the floor. Thank great. you, everybody. Thank See you. See on the floor. Thanks, Kate. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>